Hey, and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to install Windows 11 in VirtualBox. Before we begin, I want to let you know that this is the installation of the early release version, so I'm not expecting full functionality as it's still under development. Microsoft will allow you to download your own copy if you're registered with the Windows Insider program in the dev channel. So if you want to get your own copy, I'll post a link in the description walking through those steps. Like I had mentioned, this is still under development, so you're not going to get the full experience as described in the announcement. But installing it in VirtualBox is probably the best way to play with it and test it out because you're not committing your PC to it. And you can shut it down or start it up whenever you want. You can get in and out of the operating system. You can actually have it running concurrently while you're doing things on your desktop. So I think it's the safest way and probably the best way to test and experience this operating system. Let's take a look at the minimum requirements to install this on a Windows 10 PC. So first you're going to need VirtualBox and the extension pack installed. The minimum requirements for RAM is four gigs, but I've tried that and it's really laggy. So I say if you can use eight gigs, use eight gigs of RAM. 64 gigs of available disk space is needed, and you're also going to need the Windows 11 ISO image. So if you don't already have that, I'll link it in the description on how you can do that. So with that all of the way, let's go ahead and start installing the operating system. So we're going to begin this video with the assumption that you already have VirtualBox installed on your Windows 10 PC. But if you haven't already done that, I'll link this video in the description as well as the GeekArt Guides channel where we walk you through the installation of VirtualBox as well as operating systems like this in full detail. With VirtualBox now installed, we can go ahead and get ready to install Windows 11 within it. Now the first thing that you're going to need is the Windows 11 ISO image file. It's important to know where you have it stored because during the installation process, we have to point to that directory. So now that we have it located, we can begin the installation by starting up the VirtualBox Manager. What we want to do is click on the New button, and in here we want to give it a name. So Windows 11 will be the name that we provide it here. Machine folder we're going to leave as default. The type is going to be Microsoft Windows. And the version that we're going to select, we're going to go down to Windows 10 64-bit, and then we can click on Next. Next is going to be memory. I would suggest using eight gigs or greater. I'm going to max this out as much as possible. Click on next. We're going to be leaving this as default. And then VDI, we're also going to be leaving this as default. And we're going to be leaving dynamically all allocated as well. And in here, this is where it's stored. The disk space that we're going to be using is going to be 80 gigs. You can use as much as you want, but the minimum is 64. Then you can click on create. And now that it's complete, we're just going to modify the settings by clicking on the settings button in here. Under general, we're going to be leaving these all as default. We're not going to be touching anything in here. Under systems, we're going to click on the processor tab. And in here, by default, it's only giving you one. Uh, you want to max this out to as much as you can in the green space. In this instance, I have four CPUs available. Uh, so that's what I'm going to be used. It's about 50% of available space. So we're going to keep that option selected. So we had base memory already maxed out. And then under storage, what we want to do is this is the part where we're going to be pointing to the ISO image. So if you go down to the empty disk here and then click on the right hand side, select choose a disk file. This is where you need to know where your ISO file is located. You select it, you hit OK, and now we're ready to go ahead and install the operating system. The rest of the options in here in the menu we're going to be leaving as default. Now these can be modified depending on the specs of your system. Uh, for compatibility issues, you might want to change some of the settings later on, but we're going to leave everything as default for now. So we'll just click on OK, and then we can go ahead and start up the virtual machine. To start using the virtual machine, make sure it's selected on the left hand side, then click on start. You get prompted for a startup disk. In the drop down menu here, you want to make sure that you're selecting the Windows 11 64 bit ISO image and then click on the start button. The installation is going to begin here, so you're going to notice a bunch of black text. It might take a few minutes for it to begin, and uh, we'll just jump over to the first step. So we have the setup beginning, and it's going to ask for a, a Windows key. I don't have a Windows key, so I'm going to select I don't have a product key here. And the next thing it wants to do is select a version. I'm going to be using the Windows 11 Pro and then click on Next. We have the agreement here. We're going to select Accept and click on Next. And then what we're going to do is click on Custom and we're going to create a new volume here by clicking on New and then select OK and then OK again. And it'll apply those changes to the disk space and then we can click on Next. 
So now it's going to download and copy all the files that it requires for the installation in the virtual machine. I'm going to jump over to the next step, which is the setup. So the virtual machine is rebooted and now we have the setup window here. It's going to ask for a few questions uh, like the region and all the requirements for it. So I'm going to be leaving everything as default. I'll be selecting United States as my region. For the keyboard, I'm going to leave default as United States. Click on yes. And for additional keyboards, I'm going to just skip this. So now it's just checking for updates. This might take a few minutes as it goes through that process. Now it wants to know how we want to set it up. I'm going to be selecting it as personal, personal use, and then I'll click on next. And now it wants you to sign in with the Microsoft account. You don't have to, what I'm going to be doing is selecting the sign in options and then use an offline account. This way it can create a username and password with it and just log in using those credentials. So we're prompted to enter our name here. I'm going to be using Geekwire and then a password. Uh, we'll be asked to type this in twice. So this is going to be the username and password that you're going to use to sign into the operating system. So you just want to make sure you remember both uh, the username and password. Click on next. And now it's going to ask a series of security questions. It looks like it's going to ask for three here. Uh, let's see what we have on the list. Uh, pet name. I'll just type in cat. And then what else do we have to do here? City you're born in. I'll just type in city. Obviously, I'm just making up stuff as I go along here. Um, childhood nickname, I'll type in Batman. Okay, and that part's done. Click on next, and we're going to go ahead and finish this setup so we can see the Windows 11 desktop. So for privacy settings, I turn everything off. I usually turn on these options as needed. Uh, you can select whatever you want here. Uh, in my case, I'm just disabling absolutely everything. And then I'll just click on accept. So this looks like it's going to take a few minutes. I'll just jump to the next part. Okay, so it's loaded up. Now we have Windows 11 installed in VirtualBox on a Windows 10 PC. Everything's showing up pretty much the way it should, except that we don't have a proper full screen. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to install the guest editions. Now I'm not expecting everything to work properly. It should at least give me full screen. As you can see, it hasn't completely filled out the sides. It hasn't completely stretched out. So what we'll do is we'll install the guest editions. The way you normally install it is go to devices and then you're going to select the guest editions CD image. And then we can go over to the file explorer. There should be the CD loaded. Let me just see what happens here. Okay, it looks like it is. So we'll select that. So I'm just going to run this as I would with any other installation. I'll just go through the installation process for guest editions. I'll just click on my next all the way through and leave everything as default and then click on install. And you're going to want to install the virtual adapter. So you can just click on next here. It looks like everything is still loading up. We'll click on reboot. And we'll take a look at this and see if we can get everything up and running properly as it reboots. Okay, it's fully reloaded. We're back at the desktop. And now we're going to try the full screen mode with the guest editions installed. And okay, there we go. So it works. So it looks like guest editions is working with VirtualBox on Windows 11. I haven't tested out everything, but we have a full screen, which is nice because now we can use this like we would if we're using our own desktop. So we've installed Windows 11 in VirtualBox on a Windows 10 PC. We've also installed guest editions. We have everything up and running and we can start exploring the operating system and check out all the new features. So if you have any questions, you can go ahead and put them in the comments below. As I had mentioned at the beginning of the video, for this full installation, including the installation of VirtualBox, you can check out our channel, Geekware Guides. If you found this video useful, please give us a thumbs up. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.